Hi, this is Dr. Eric Westman with another edition of Ask Adapt. Today's topic is the long-term effects of a keto program. Back in 1998, when I first got involved with the research, so about 20 years ago, uh, everyone predicted that eating a high-fat diet would be bad. It would cause heart disease, it would cause all sorts of problems, and I have to say that those predictions really haven't come true at least the large predictions um, after doing eight years of clinical research and then now about 10 years of a clinical practice, we just haven't seen all of those dire predictions that were uh, being said back then and even being said now. Um, a couple interesting things is the keto idea, which includes the food quality as well as carb quantity restriction is something that really pretty new. So I have more confidence in the carbohydrate restriction data that's in the literature and in the clinical experience that I've had. I think it's an unresolved question of whether the attention to food quality adds more value to just limiting the carbohydrates. Um, but if I can rephrase the question, uh, Tony asks, um, have there been any studies showing any long-term health issues um, and Suzanne asked, are there any negative long-term effects of a keto program? I'm going to rephrase it in terms of, are there any long-term issues when you don't eat lots of sugar in the form of sugars and starches in the diet? And I'm going to rephrase it that way because I am not afraid of using fat as my major fuel for my body anymore uh, after years of doing it. It's now been about 20 years for me. And uh, I don't want to label it as something that's new or bizarre when really this is a time-honored way of eating for most mammals and humans uh, specifically. Um, so in the research studies, uh, realized that there were no research studies until uh, 2002. And it's taken the last 15 years to get the powers that be even to consider doing research at a level of outcomes. And that's what we still need. Um, just this year, there's a study by Ben Puri um, where all of the markers in the blood improved in those who are on a keto diet with diabetes, except the LDL cholesterol. But they're lined up in a figure in the paper and everyone gets better except that one marker. Um, also another study last year, the ketone bodies mimic the lifespan extending properties of caloric restriction. This is by Veach and his colleagues. And so the idea that ketones being around might even be therapeutic or might even extend life is something that's very new. And the outcome studies have yet to be done and they need to be done. Um, but I can uh, say that we've seen the blood levels be different in those who don't eat carbohydrates, so the keto uh, eating folks. For example, the cholesterol levels can go up, the total cholesterol and the LDL, but as demonstrated in this paper, everything else is getting better. And uh, there's a term for that, the hyper responders, if you will. I am thinking more that this is just a new normal range of people who don't eat carbohydrates. We're comparing you know, what's normal and abnormal to those people who've been eating carbohydrates. And we're assuming that the same risk uh, factors and same um, health effects apply. And I'm not so sure of that. The same applies to the blood glucose. Um, Tanith asks, is it possible to become insulin resistant when you weren't insulin resistant before when you're staying keto? And I think, Tanith, if you're uh, defining insulin resistance as just an elevated blood glucose, I do see some people who are long-term uh, fat burners or on the keto program whose blood sugars, blood glucose do go to 110, 120 milligrams per deciliter. So higher than the, what would be called a normal range. It might even be called pre-diabetic. But my thinking is that this doesn't represent the same health issue as those who had an elevated blood glucose and were eating lots of carbohydrates. That's my hunch at the moment, uh, based on the clinical experience of people that I've seen. We do need longer term studies. We need these funded by the people who can afford such studies, which is really the governmental agencies.
Um, Suzanne asks again, are there any negative long-term effects? You know, um, my uh, philosophy is to measure everything that we know to be um, uh, uh, possible to measure about health. I'm not just uh, limited to blood levels of things. So I encourage my patients to get vascular uh, measurements, to get ultrasounds of the neck, of the aorta, uh, to get the calcium score of the heart if you're concerned about coronary calcium or coronary artery disease. Just relying on the blood levels is not sufficient to say that you have or, or have uh, the disease or to have high risk for it anymore. Um, so until we have long-term studies, I think we take our own uh, health measurement in our own hands. If your doctor doesn't want to do those tests, you can get them outside the medical system. This is checking the vascular system itself because the, the diabetes, the cholesterol levels, all of these things are, are um, monitored in order to reduce the vascular disease problems. Uh, so why not measure the arteries directly? And that's what I recommend. Um, Madison asks, would you recommend a 20 gram or lower type diet for someone that is otherwise healthy with normal body fat? Well, Madison, I don't think of this as a weight loss diet. Uh, it, it's used for that. Uh, if someone has excess body fat, they will burn it and they will lose the fat weight. This is really just a fat burning type of diet, meaning you're eating the fat and then you're burning the fat. So I think it would be fine for someone to use a 20 gram carb or lower type of diet, even if they're normal body weight. Um, we've had some people actually gain weight by changing to this way of eating because we've normalized and optimized the food that they're eating. Yeah, you might be on a um, unhealthy diet and not be able to gain weight and eating keto or low carb actually improves your protein, for example. Um, those are my thoughts on the long-term effects of the keto program. I'm reminded of a metaphor I used some years ago of uh, being in the boat, uh, leaving Spain, uh, trying to find the new world, and everyone thought that the boat would fall off the end of the world. Um, and uh, I'm still looking for all of the bad things to be happening, although I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to find bad things at a very low rate, similar to what other diets might have, and those kinds of small risks have to be ferreted out or, or fleshed out in formal research studies, which I am totally for and would support um, using my own research background and clinical trial expertise. So that's what you have for long-term effects of a keto program. I hope that's helpful.